Well, well, well. How's everyone going for Tuesday? Did you enjoy the Monday session, guys? Yes or no? Hopefully you did. Hopefully you had a good session. I thought Monday rocked personally. Hopefully it rocked for you too. Welcome everybody to the stream. Hello, XLM Vet for Life. Welcome to the Diamond Hands. Thank you very much for joining up again. XLM, appreciate your support. You seem to have a lot of... You're going all over the place, man. One minute vet, one minute XLM. But uh, thank you very much <laughs> for joining up again. Let's have a look here. So we've got our height monitor on for today just to see the, the fanciest stocks, the fanciest things that are moving that everybody's chatting about doing the chitter chatters on wall street bets on twitters on everything else and you can see it's clearly cle out in the lead here social volume change is big also wolf who knows what the hell wolf is but it is moving these are the stocks these are the prices hyper equity if you want to check this out this was sent in by a viewer thank you very much uh, to the viewer we'll give him a quick shout out this was sent in from nope ha ha lol what that's actually his name. <laughs> uh, just a quick reminder, if anyone's not currently in the public Discord or private Discord community, come and get in there, guys. There's all these rooms, obviously, the private section, the public section, memes. You guys post some great memes. My God, I've got like a bong smoking one now, it looks like. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Very good. The joint Elon. I've got to check that out later. That's, that's a funny one. All right, everybody. Are we ready? So these are the stocks that are moving throughout the session. These are the ones that are getting, I guess, the chat changes. And you'll notice it's mostly the normal ones, except for Wolf. I don't know. Not sure what that is. Let's have a quick look at Wolf. So Wolf ran yesterday, it looks like, pretty heavily. New one in the list. It's got to be a Dogecoin meme kind of movement. I don't trust this. I don't trust the Wolf, guys. But let's have a look at the CLNE. So CLNE is the one that's moving pre-market here. $11.86, up 6.18%. Yesterday, 3.43. Clearly a lot of interest coming back in here. And uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. I mean, what can we say? It's had a spike already to $14, $15. It's pulled back down. And now today, it's having another pre-market spike with 6.18%. Let's now go around the markets though. What is going on? Firstly, US 100. Let's give ourselves a clap. <laughs> Gotta say, damn, guys. Damn. What the hell? Taking that thing, just smashing through the resistance. Not a care in the world. It's pretty good. Anyone make some good money on this one? It was, uh, it was some nice movements there yesterday. We had on US 100, the NASDAQ. As expected, US 500 lagged a little bit in terms of raw percentage. Reason why? Rotation, 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 rotation. It's like a rotisserie. The stocks are moving in and out. You could see that very clearly. Uh, when we did our analysis today, just using this chart here, I'll just quickly bring it in so you can see it. Have a look at that. XLK out in the lead. What's down the bottom? XLF, XLB. When you have underperformance of other sectors and the tech stocks, communications, healthcare, they're the only ones that are going up. Of course, you will see some decline and when you have that type of market, you're just not going to get uh, the big move in the US 500 if not everything's going right. The discussion point at the moment is market breadth. So basically it's market. My God, look at that handwriting. That's good, yeah? And then it's all about the breadth. So what does this mean? It means how many stocks are going up. At this stage, it looks like it's mostly a move into hyper stocks, healthcare, biotechnology, and of course, technology itself. That is not the breadth that you usually require for a healthy market. And it's not bad. It just means that's what's happening. And we need to be well aware that the underperformance of the US 500 could be there to stay as we start to see tech boost up. Why are we starting to see tech boost up? I think Apple showed the signs. It showed the glimmers of some serious business yesterday. That was a huge move. We broke through these two resistances. You can see here, Apple really fired yesterday with a big percentage. 136, question mark next. I do think it'll have a problem with 132, but there's a bit of runway here for Apple. It's still down from the highs. Let's do a percentage here. Still down from the highs over 10%, which is a decent amount for a big stock. Remember, this is a huge part of the NASDAQ as well. So if it fires, 
Um, the rest will fire and come along with it. Nice closure out above the moving averages. Took out those resistance, nasty looking weak candles. And hopefully now we can move towards the 136. It's been on our watch list for a while and rightfully so. Bradley Back says the triple Q printed yesterday, man. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen Oldbridge says all my charts rocketed in the last hour. Uh, it was on fire. There's no doubt. Tom's analogies. We've always got something going on here, Terry. That's right. ATX Mize, $5. Hello, my dude. Hope you and the chat are well. We are. Well, I hope the chat as well as chat is good as well. Absolutely. Could you do me a massive favor and check out my baby AMP on the Gemini Exchange? Your boy AMP Amized. Oh, so it's not ATX, it's AMP Amized now. So for anyone that doesn't know, ATX Mized has pretty much always donated to look at AMP. <laughs> He's been holding this one with the diamond hands. I think he got in somewhere around here. I don't know, somewhere in this area. And that's a great breakout for you, isn't it? What a recovery. What is that in terms of raw percentages since the crash? 250% up. So this, this crypto coin is really moving here for you. Nice breakout of resistance. No doubt that if this thing holds above here that it's done a nice breakout. You know this is the psychological zone it's going for, man. I think there's no doubt that this thing struggles with the 0 0.010s. Where did it stop last time? 0 0.078, okay? All right, so you're seeing that? Where did it stop them over here? 0 0.06. Where does it stop this time? Probably just before the 0.1. It makes sense. Then what happens? Most likely, it has a bit of a pullback. There will be buying again, you would think, from the resistance break. And hopefully it moves through. Also, volume has been increasing. Whatever this exchange is, check out the buys. The volume was definitely increasing across the board. Let's go to the four hour quickly. Yeah, just a super powerhouse at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if this power is close to the point one, it comes back down, consolidates for a while, and then hopefully keeps on moving. Good luck. And uh, things are looking better on your AMP on the Gemini exchange. Let's continue our look around the market. So our expectation yesterday was, I think, bullish. That's what I put in. Um, overall, it was, you guys were mixed. Chat, you were mixed. You know this. You got it wrong yesterday, guys. It was not mixed. It was not flat. It smashed through. And uh, yeah, today, what's our expectation? Mm. Now, that's a tough one. I would say up again. Why not? But we will eventually pull back, I think, back to this resistance line. So I think we will pull back to 14,750 and when, or 75, sorry, 14,075. And we'll probably hit one of these moving averages. Whether it's a two hour 20 or a one hour 20, I don't know. But it makes sense for the market to have a little bit of a pullback at some point and then continue on with its growth. So US 100 looks good. So have a look at the US 500. This is the main one that we're now going to have to look at every single day and figure out where it is in relation to the community trend line. This trend line matters, guys. It is the only thing that we've been able to use as a great indicator of the end of an uptrend and the start of a little corrective pullback. We've used it now consistently for many months. It's been one of the it's the community's trend line. It's all of you guys put together you know where the bears get back in control. Now, if the market moves up here, we're talking 4,300, 4,400. So are we going to see a green rest of June and a green July? I'll put that back on you guys. What do you think? Chat, green or red for June, July? Tell me right now what your expectations are in the markets. US 500 all-time peaks slowly grinding its way through the 20 exponential moving average on the pullbacks. Two steps forward, one step back. It's melting up very, very slowly. Can it continue to do so? Let me know. Welcome to the 774 viewers out there as well. What's the Gemini exchange? Who knows? It's where the magical crypto lives. Here we go. People are putting in their votes. Red, green, red, green, red, green. That's literally how I read it, and that's how it is. Wow, it is big correction, Valdo says. Green, red, 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 says Jeremy. June swoon. Well, little known to everybody out there. Did you know that June is the best? June is not the best in month to invest. 
But you know what the best month to invest is historically? Guys, does anyone out there know which is the best one? Which is the best month? Green, we've earned it, damn it. <laughs> Fair enough. So we'll let everyone answer that. But yes, most people seem to be a 50-50 on whether it's going to be green or red at this stage. I will let you know, though, in the next two months, we're going into the best month of the year. Historically, hard to bet against it when it's so statistically good. Let's scroll down here. US 10-year. Boring. Boring US 10-year. Just keep hodling. Just sit there. I don't care what you do. You can move down. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you do. Just just don't go back up here. All right? We don't want you back up here, US 10-year. You stay down here and you do whatever you want. Most people are saying the best month of the year. Few of you got it right. Quite a few of you got it wrong. PK Sub in July, correct. BO Noob, July. J JR, July, yes. Somebody said the best month of the year is March. Someone else said the best month of the year is September. Amit, what are you doing, Amit? It's the, are you like a giant bear? So that's why you think September is the best month. That's the worst month, bro. That's the, <laughs> that is the absolute worst month ever. September is the one that has the highest chance of going down. So let's go through all of our pairs. We've got dollar index breaking out at this point. Now this usually you would think is the pinpoint sign of a little bit of risk off coming into the markets. So Wall Street, Generally, the punters out there, they're thinking, hmm, you know what? We're going to let people continue buying this market. We're going to push this dollar index up as we position out of it. And a lot of people see this as a risk on risk off thing. And look, I talk about it quite a lot. The reality is it's not as correlated as it used to be. It used to be incredibly correlated. If you saw the dollar index going up, it meant the stock market was going to decline. We just don't see it like we used to. This is a fairly strong breakout here. If we think about what's happened, all of the sequences we talk about on this channel all the time are happening. Firstly, we have coiling. We effectively have a little flag here with a breakout that's going above. Strong. Then on top of that, we also have, if you think about the four hour, a very nice pattern base formation where a breakout makes sense. We've got a coil. A breakout makes sense. What's the next level for the dollar index? About 91.40 level, 91.40. So a closure here above this point should signal dollar strength for the next coming days. This is a pretty big deal, and I think it is occurring as we talk right now. Can it hold? The session will find out for us. But yeah, September is definitely not the best month. July is the best month of the year over a huge amount of stats. Let's go over, what does this mean for gold? It's not really bullish. If you see the dollar index breaking through like that, I don't see it as a bullish sign for gold. Of course, strong US dollar doesn't really mean strong gold. It usually means weaker gold. Gold's unfortunately through our eight hour trend line here. We can see it together here. Look at this. My God, the eight hour trend line was serious. We talked yesterday about how the weakness was starting to appear. Unfortunately, it got through there. You know what? We were almost to the dollar. As a community, we almost got to the to the dollar. Check out where it stopped. So as I said in today's video, I had 1842 as, I think it was like here, that I had the line. You've got to a little, be a little bit, you know, you can't just have the perfect price. So you've got to be a little bit, uh, a little bit different when you do it. Just put in a range. I've said this several times. If you think 1842 is the zone, put a range in, set an alert for the top of the range. So get something like a uh, little box out put a box between two zones, set an alert for the top of the zone. When it comes in, have a look at it, see what's happening with price. And in this case, you're not going to take it anyway straight away. So you're looking for lightning bolts on the smaller time frame. You're looking for a change of trend at this level. But boy, oh boy, was that a strong zone. And it's clear to see why when we look at the daily. When we scroll to the daily, bring it over, check it out. 200 simple moving average, the green line, 50 exponential moving average, and the previous resistance. It's a pretty strong zone. You can see why people were buying it around that level. Let's move over to silver quickly. Still stuck within the range. This is really not great for trading unless you like trading within ranges. I think there's more risks than it's worthwhile taking when you're trading this type of stuff. So I like a breakout more than this. But if silver's your jam, just remember it's stuck between 2820 
and the 27.20 at this stage. We're basically just full on trading within the range. US oil took a bit of a dump, then it recovered beautifully. Where did it recover from? Our level, our zone, and it was beautiful. Look at this. Just before the 20 moving average, long leg doji, big bull hammer, bull hammer, bang, new high. Good work, black gold. We got it done. Yes, look at black gold go. I mean, have we been the most correct on black gold as a community? Absolutely, we have. We're smashing it. But you know what? Caution is in the air. $100 mainstream media articles everywhere, like spam, coming in my chat, coming into our news feeds. Will oil go to $100? The most popular option right now, $100 call options. Who the hell knows why? So what are we going to do? We're going to be smart about this. $72, $75. We know these are technical zones that make sense from previous levels. So we're going to have to keep on focusing on those zones, guys. 72, 75. We'll keep focusing there. We've got some donations coming in. Let's have a quick look at this. What have we got going on? Uh, Fighter for FT. Well, I'll call him Fighter FT. $2. What do you think of Clov? All right. So we'll get into some meme stocks now. Let's have a look at the meme stocks. Basically, what we're saying in the market recap so far is things look relatively good for another green day today. The only thing that's weird is the dollar index. Clov, it's up 0.14%. If we go over to this, you can see Clov and what's going on. Let's have a look at the chitter chat. So social volume change. Do we have hype charts and chatter? Oh, that's a pro. Oh, pro. We're not paying for that. Screw that. No way we're going to pay for the pro. And here I was thinking this website was cool. And then it tried to charge us just to see which was popular. So the hype score here is low. Two. Where is the hype score? C-L-N-E. <clears throat> that seems to be the hype score for the day. C-L-N-E. Do I like Clov? Not really. Do I think that Clov could have another bounce? It's always possible. But when you look at the stock itself and you think about what happened, it's every single time we have to look back at the history and say, did it have second runs on it? So when we go through Clob stock and we go, okay, did it have second runs on it, et cetera, et cetera. If it didn't, and it never had like a second bust boom before, where over here, it just kind of went down, slightly recovered, then went down again. There's no diamond hands here and there's no commitment of the buyers. So unfortunately, I'm not sure whether Clob will go again, but at this stage, this is the one with the chitter chat on it right now, it seems. Um, obviously, AMC and GME also in there. Uh, good luck, fighter, but I'm not seeing it just yet. If you're wondering where the levels are, technically, guess where it is right now. You can see the long leg doji on the daily. You can see another long leg doji. These mean that if you close above, there's a lot of buyers committed. You close below, it's probably over. Back to $12, it goes and starts to consolidate for the next move. Also watch the volume, but realistically, it's these long leg dojis that I'd be paying a lot of attention to. Robin, five bucks. Hi, mate. Can you check out the crypto swipe? Ticker is SXP UST. Yeah, we can have a look at that. Let's have a look at SXP. Yep, nice base formation here, man, on the daily. Kind of looks like Bitcoin, but like a weaker crapper version. Um, when we go through that's what I'd be doing. I'd be basically drawing somewhere around these trend lines. It did break out. 20 moving average is being contended with right now. Uh, volume is pretty consistent, so it's not like a huge breakout. But at this stage, it's recovering. It looks very similar to a Bitcoin chart, but with way bigger dump off. Uh, how would I look at this? I'd probably be waiting for it to get through the 200. So something like that. And then I'd be pretty happy with it and its move. And I think that at that point, you're looking for it to go to $298, $3 as soon as it gets past there. So $240 to $290 is a good range that I think it's doing. And it is in recovery. This is the first step of recovery. Get a closure above the 20 moving average. I always say that's the first step of recovery. And then the rest should start to appear. It's very similar to what we saw with our square stock yesterday. And by the way, guys, whoo! Let's click on it. Let's click square. Yes. 5% up. Well done, everybody. Another great day for square. Now, 
Was it because of Bitcoin? Well, I'd say in the morning, it wasn't, da- it wasn't up as much as we thought it would be. And we kind of said that. I think this is doing the right types of steps of recovery. It's very similar to what we just looked in SXP. Basically, you have a series of trend lines, the trend line lower peaks. You've closed above. Bullish sign there. Very bullish. Then you've closed above the trough, the peak, the higher trough, the higher peak. This is the type of signal that should take us to 240, 260, hopefully 280. Now, we will require that Bitcoin doesn't go back down to 28K. And it's not because I think Square is a huge Bitcoin play. I really don't. It actually only makes up still a portion. But the market sees it this way. The hype comes on this when the crypto market's recovering. So we've just got to be aware that while Square had a great day yesterday and the technicals look perfect, we still are at the mercy a little bit of what Bitcoin does. So Bitcoin stabilizes. I think the stock could move because of its other recovery elements. We've spoken about those on the channel. This is a good trade and hopefully it continues to hold up from a technical basis. Good luck out there, people. Uh, K Kennedy, $20. Can we get some claps in the chat for K Kennedy? Wow, dude. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thank you very much. Mm. K Kennedy. Wow. 20 bucks. Tom, would you please take a look at AMD? Looks like we may see a lightning bolt off the 50. Also, do you think uh, do you think we'll see Twitter gap fill this week? Thank you. Mm, we'll do Twitter first. So Twitter was a little bit disappointing yesterday. Still struggling to get closure above 61. I think if you get the 61 close, the 64 will happen. Um, but yeah, we need the 61 close. I noticed Kathy Woods loves this stock so much. I don't know why. But yeah, we're looking for the Twitter gap to be filled. Hopefully it can happen. Need a closure above 61 to really fire up the participants in the market. You can see resistance sold off. Bull day, bull day, indecision day. So what we need is we need another nice little closure above 61 then we can feel a lot more confident about where we're going unfortunately at this stage it has not happened let's have a look at your amd so you notice i've taken amd away from the speculation list it's not in here at the moment stocks of interest there is no amd we've talked several times about this giant trend line that is the bane of amd traders this is the this is the problem zone there are good news here though i think Yesterday's candle was pretty sweet. Check this out. 2050 cross. It actually looks like a bit of a flag here or at least some great consolidation. See that? And we are going straight in here. But if you take this distance, let's say we take the whole entire distance of the move from here to here and then we just pull that and extrapolate that out, it's calling for a lot larger number. So does AMD look good on the charts? I think it looks pretty damn good. Yesterday was a, cl- a nice close, dude. It was a nice close. New high here. We should smash straight into the 85, and that's probably what you're saying. Looks like we'll see, uh, is it a lightning bolt? I think you've already kind of got your lightning bolts. But yes, 2050 holding behind it. You've got great buying pressure that's coming through here in the 80. You're only, what, a dollar fifty above that. So you know what? I'm going to bring it back into the list. Guys, it's coming back in. Let's get it in here. AMD, we're coming back in. And we're going to go up here. And we're going to go up here. And there we are. Back in its spot, 81.55. I quite like this consolidation. Let's have a look. Let's investigate a little bit further. After all, you did pay 20 bucks, man. You need some investigation. Hmm. What's happening here? Nice. Lots of wick rejections up here. The first time we've seen a bit of a higher kind of low, multiple resistance just across this point on the smaller time frames. It's not really helping us too much. Let's go to 15 minutes. Okay. Let's go back to the two hour. Hmm. So there's never been a closure above this area. And yesterday there was just at the end. What do you guys think about AMD? Chat, tell me. Is it good or is it not good? Scott Morgan says, <clears throat> PSFE is testing my patience. Uh, yeah, rightfully so. That was pretty bad yesterday. Isn't PSFE... I don't think it broke through though, Scott Morgan. That's the problem. 
One of Kathy's analysts is a fan of Twitter because he sees potential future monetization through tipping. I totally agree with him in terms of tipping being monetized. But is that really worth? How much is the tipping industry worth? Like how much does that make up the area? By the way, we've got some good research on uh, the gambling stock DKNG thanks to a viewer yesterday. So we might check that out together a little bit because I did see that was down heavily throughout yesterday's session. AMD is bullish, says the chat. I like it, says Permit Fisher. AMD is good, says FXE. AMD's not bad, guys. AMD's not bad. We got the uh, the 5900X into the computer on the weekend. I tell you what, smooth as butter, guys. Beast. So I don't mind the cons. Yes, there's a recent lower low. I understand, but we're still within this range. I think it looks okay. That four hour is compelling. The price action is compelling. The 2050 is compelling. What else? Did we see good volume yesterday for any... Eh, not really. Similar volume. Yeah, I think it's okay. The 2050 is the main thing I'm looking at. This means that if price comes back down, there should be a lot of buyers around here. It's all about risk reward whenever you're looking at stocks and you're looking at things. So if, you, if you're looking at structure like this and the structure looks good, then that can present, um, you know, I guess a better... Like, you never know exactly, but it presents a more... Uh, kind of better trade sometimes you're picking a stock up and there's nothing underneath it and you think well if it doesn't hold this level i'm stuffed it's just going to get destroyed i'm going to be out of pocket a huge amount of money or i'm going to get my stop knocked out here you have at least a 2050 you've got previous resistance you've got an artificial buyback going on in the stock there are some things to like there there are some things to like there so thank you, Kay Kennedy, for the very generous donation. Jersey Garwell, so been a member for two months. Thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a member again, Jersey. Appreciate your support on the channel. Someone mentioned PSFE yesterday. This has never closed, unfortunately, against the level we need, which is this 1266. For this stock to do well, it needs to break this hideous trend line down. You can see the weakness. This is one of the better trend lines I've seen in the market for quite some time. It's why it's on speculatives. And if it does get through here, that's going to be a strong sign into the $14, then hopefully a strong sign to the $16, etc., etc., etc. It's a great downward trend line. The bears are having a lot of fun with this. Hopefully, this upward trend line on the smaller time frame holds for you. So if you're in it, you need that to hold. Today is the day for this PSFE if it's going to try to regain some composure and go put pressure on the 1270. But we'll be watching it. We've got alerts set at those levels. Jessica Santana says, CBA, ASX or ASX index, please, hun. <laughs> All right, Jessica. <laughs> Let's have a look at CBA for you. We'll check out Commonwealth Bank, the biggest bank in Australia. Do I like them? I think it's overpriced. You know why? It's a bank. You know what banks tend to do? They go on magical runs that moves too fast, too quick, and then they go into sideways action. And you can see here, look at this 20 exponential moving average. Look at this bank. It's out of control. And it's done this during my trading career once before. You know how you can tell if this is overpriced? This stock runs on PE. Go look at the PE. Look at the average PE over five years. And you will notice that CBA is not cheap. I repeat, it is in the upper band, high upper band. Be very, very careful with CBA right now. If you're in it, you can follow the trend and you have to just find out the moving average that you're looking at from the trend perspective. Maybe it's a 50 moving average here on the one hour. I don't know, but that is a high, high stock right now. Massey says, I think Plug has done its thing. Uh, yeah, so before we go into AMC, we'll have a quick look at Plug. Very disappointing close here yesterday. Still above, so it's still just above the resistance. It tried to do its thing. I kind of feel like it's going to 30 bucks again. And then <clears throat> this will be the point where we find out whether the bulls can regain control of it. I think the problem with Plug is it was moving not just with you know great price action, but it was also moving with this whole... Uh, meme stock kind of generation of, of movements that we saw last week. And when the money started flowing out of those and going into different ones, the plug really suffered. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a meme stock one. 
And uh, yeah, 30 must hold. If 30 doesn't hold, it's not going to be good moving forward. It must hold at that zone from a technical perspective anyway. Let's move over to AMC. That was incredibly technical yesterday. What this did ran straight into the resistances that we had. Then it dumped off that level, came back down, tried to make it back up and dumped off again. We're at 57.79 pre-market here. It's a pretty good price. Will it break past the 60 today, guys? Yes or no? What do you think in the chat? Do you think it can break past 60? If it does, it really opens up that 68.72 once again. And that will be amazing if it does do so. If it doesn't, 52 is where I expect buyers to regain control of the market. So around here, I think there'll be buyers on the smaller time frames. Hopefully they can regain control of the market. And these are the critical zones that we've got set for AMC. I still like all of those levels and the horizontal supports should hold through. GME, now, this one is a bit sick. 226, considering where, we're at, where we are at with AMC, this should be a lot higher. Now, if we go here, you'll notice that possibly, possibly, GameStop's starting to get a little bit more social volume change. What do you guys think? Do you think that GameStop is getting more social volume change or what are your thoughts on it right now? Does it have the chance of regaining some of that momentum? Remember, we do have diamond hands in that community. There's no doubt. It's not like these other ones here. AMC and of course GameStop are the only two. They're the pillars of the meme stocks. So will they hold their zones. GameStop's kind of cheap in comparison to where it was like a week ago. I can't believe I called that cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap, guys. <laughs> it's cheaper than it was a week ago. It's down about 33%, which of course <clears throat> enables, if we think about it from a percent percentage perspective, you know, the potential of a 49% just to get back to this resistance. And I think if it came back here, it would actually bust it. I don't think it comes back here. Let's say it does it again. For whatever reason, if it does it again, it should be able to bust that level and continue on. Yeah, it's a super interesting zone. Unfortunately for Corsair buyers in the morning, it was not to be. But I'll tell you what, if you go to a 15 minute, let's just think about our line yesterday. I didn't change this line. Let's just think about our line. We had this point literally written in because previous resistance now obviously we stopped screaming early in the morning around here but very quickly it pulled back down and then gave a huge opportunity for a massive pickup and that's pretty big big percentage i mean what is this this is a 16.51 percent move in intraday trade that occurred yesterday during this thing and and this was a great little level now it's back at that zone do i expect buyers here sure if buyers fail to commit to this level, uh, it's it's all over on the Corsair. It really is because that is a classic huge recovery, massive move down with no follow through. No follow through. We'll read the chat here. Let's see what's going up. Big Dipper says GME will move up again. Fair enough. Uh, low volume right now. I think, what's that? I think it has no influence, says Terry. Interesting. 60 plus, let's make some money, says Dan Drew. Oh, you want AMC to go above 60 plus. AMC to $600, says J Rock. AMC to Pluto as well. <laughs> we'll have to find out about that. Plug looking like a head and shoulders, says Bradley. Yeah, plug looks sick. It needs to get, it needs to hold 30, man. If you can't hold 30, uh, I really don't feel very comfortable in that. And I think it's the problem is it's, it's in that point where you know, people are losing interest in those. They're moving on to the next thing. This is exactly what happened last time. People start with AMC, GME, they go to the others, they all get excited, all the money goes into this, it goes into that. The next greatest thing yesterday, it was Corsair. Who Today, it might be CLNE. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't work out. It just does not work out. In fact, how's, how's Naked going? <clears throat> you know, this is back down in 72 cents. Another one that was running just the other day. So a lot of squeeze stocks, they just do not have these diamond percentages in them, the diamond hands. Let's have a look at workhorse for you guys. So we've got our zones here. 
Uh, it's on support, man. On support. So workhorse, previous resistance. We had that earmarked from the other day. We obviously had our resistances earmarked before they got hit. If it's going to go, it, it needs to needs to hold here and move move ahead. AMC will be 60 before open, says Chuck Rose. Well, hopefully it is, man. All right, we've got some other donations coming in here. One from Jack, Jake, sorry, Silver, $2.99, B-I-I-B, Biogen. Let's have a look here. So, Biogen, huge announcement last week. Was it last week or the week before? It was huge anyway. Moved heavily, came back down to the 372. Now, why did it come back down to that level? It becomes perfectly clear when you look at the charts, previous resistances. It's stuck in the middle of nowhere. It's come back up. It's shown some resilience. And you can see in this price action, we've got trough, we've got peak, we've got higher trough currently. You get a higher peak, it's on for the next move. I tend to believe the big move's over here and it consolidates between 372 and some other level. I tend to think it's kind of over. The big move is over and now we're in the consolidation period. Uh, thanks so much as well to the 1,358 viewers out there. Thanks very much, guys. It'll be good. Distractions, says Chuck. That's right. Not Biogen, but the other ones are distractions from the main causes of the AMC, GME type of things. So let's go through some of our stocks. But firstly, we will go to the market. Let's have a look what's moving pre-market here. So we've got Ocugen. Ocugen's up hard, actually. 16.97%. They got absolutely obliterated the other day. Back heavily here. Clean Fuel, CLNE, up 6%. Mara, 5%. Riot, 3.39. So other strong movements here from the Bitcoin miners out there. Palantir up 0.8. And then if we scroll down and through, you'll notice GameStop, Naked, Plug, Tilray, Sundial, they're all down, unfortunately. When we go over to the big screener for the big stocks, let's have a quick look here. Pre-market, huge positions. Which ones are moving the best? Down the most, ARE, then Moderna, CME, Adobe, SE. Big sell, Some sell positions coming in from ARC as well on SE, if you didn't know. They were selling a little bit of that. Salesforce, few that moved heavily yesterday were down. Greens, BioNTech, Toyota, Spotify. Interesting and then the rest through this session. So let's have a quick look here at some of the stocks we like. Twitter still looks fine. We saw that before. CRM, good day for that yesterday because it's a smaller, slower moving stock, maybe a little bit too fast for it. Has a little bit of a breather after that day. Strong move though, nonetheless. Net continues incredible strength. This whole sector is just going crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. 95.64. Wow. Great stock, overpriced, unfortunately. Square, I think that's a good close for it yesterday. TDOC, 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 TDOC. Nice close for it yesterday. Good close above all the other peaks. Could be a bit of a sleeper. Could also be terrifying. <laughs> but nice close nonetheless. Airbnb continues to try its strength to fill that 164 level. I'm feeling hopeful about this. Hopefully it can do it. You can see some volume increase yesterday and it re it pushed all the way back up here. So we didn't really benefit from the great moves yesterday in the market. This one was down. RCL is trending, Michael says. I'll have a look at that in a second. What, what software are you using, man? TradingView. And if you just look at the descriptions down below, you'll notice TradingView. <clears throat> So it's pretty good. It's probably the best technical software out there at this point. Apple, strong close yesterday. Amazing move. I think this is starting to set up for at least a 132 and then hopefully a 135. That move's so big though, it kind of makes me think today might be a downward momentum in the morning followed by maybe a little bit of pickup at the close. That's, that's what's kind of got me going on here with Apple. But that's a strong move. Let's have a look at Amazon. Oh, yeah, Amazon's close the other day was great. Amazon's close the other day was excellent. Trend line continues to hold, so you can extrapolate that out to infinity. Put that trend line out there, so we've got it there for next time we load the chart. Great closure. 
Wow. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Not going to get the same percentages that you get from a squeeze stock, but it's very cool percentages nonetheless. Nice. Not bad. Just quickly resetting this. There we go. Yeah, I quite like the chart. Good recovery there. Let's have a look at um, Tesla. 618 pre. Not really excited about Tesla till we breach 635 and then 660. Still the same analysis we've done every day. Trend line down here. All intersects at the 660, 666 devil number. That's the percentage that we're looking at. That's where we want. We need it here. Bang, straight into there. That participation would be a lot more interesting. A few people saying Caterpillar. Let's have a look at Caterpillar. Uh, like we've been bearish Caterpillar. We think this thing sucks. Unfortunately, it's overpriced and it was moving on down. Uh, Caterpillar continues to show bearishness. Where does it stop? Possibly 200. Possibly it goes this low. Let's have a look at the weekly 20. That's usually one of the best areas. So we've got weekly 20 into weekly 50. Let's have a look through history. So when it failed last time after that big move in 17, it started a pretty decent decline because it's a sugar rush. The stock gets a sugar rush. It accelerates. It's not unheard of. Let's have a look at this stock here. Caterpillar accelerates. Incredible gains. It's the next coming of the biggest company that produces machinery. It's going so great. Here, it's going so great. Well, guess what? Wasn't that great after that? After the sugar rush is over, guys, it doesn't perform well. It is known to have sugar rushes. Look at the GFC, global financial crisis, sugar rush, domination, pull up, lackluster results till the next sugar rush. We see complete changes to the taxation system here. We see different things in the economy being undertaken from construction, etc. All of a sudden, another sugar rush on this stock. And that's why I didn't like John Deere. And that is why John Deere is in short potential because it's the same concept. Unfortunately, there's probably more decline to go. Will it be like a few steps down, one step back, a few steps down? Sure. But there's markets within markets. And that's what I'm trying to, to get through. Amazon, one year without price change and DXY falling. Yeah, Amazon hasn't moved in quite some time. But remember, it quickly repriced itself during the, the crisis last year. It quickly repriced itself. So yeah, DE still looks pretty weak. FedEx starting to look pretty weak here as well. We've been negative on FedEx since it broke through the trend line. I think it looks nasty. Could it reverse? Sure. But that doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. That, does that fill you with confidence, guys? Do you think that's a great looking chart? You think, oh, yes. I, I wish I owned FedEx at $293. Would you have diamond hands on this stock right now? Let me put it in perspective for you. Let me put it in perspective for you. Does that make you want to own the stock? $91, $91, it's FedEx, guys. It's not a hyper stock. $91 to $320. Come on. Are you kidding? $91, $320, please. And you tell me that's not overpriced on a stock that, believe me, the market knows how to price. It's not like a hyper growth stock where they have no idea how to price the stock. They don't understand you know, Tesla, the stock has never been understood by Wall Street. This stock, they know. This is the this is the meat and potatoes of companies. They know what's up. They're nasty. They created this nice big high. Let's see if it continues to decline. Speaking of declines, yesterday, disappointing day. We kind of sniffed it out though on that four hour chart for the DraftKings. Another declining day here. Nasty four hour. Back to support. Pre-market down hard. Down hard. In fact, I don't even know why it's down that much. Am I reading this or does that say 7.11%? Obviously, there's some news here. Anyone got the news? Give me the scoop. Because I'm still interested in the stock, but I'm also interested in the fact that it's 7% down. Does that mean we have to go to $45?
What's going on here, guys? There's blood on the streets of DKNG. I'll bring up this uh, analysis I got from Scotty Not Too Hottie. That's right, Scotty Not Too Hottie. Pretty good. Might share this in the room. Basically, I uh, join Discord, exclamation mark Discord, if you're interested in getting these. So this is basically some stats on gambling in America. And you can see all of the states all of the revenues they make from gambling, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, one of the things the states are going to have to do coming out of this pandemic is make some damn money. What's one of the ways that they can make some damn money? Unfortunately, it's going to be legalizing gambling. And it's already shown that a lot of these states that don't have legalized physical gambling will allow online gambling under the lotto rules or whatever it is. So this is interesting to see all of these stats. I'll share this right now in the public discord community so guys get on in there we'll bring it over public trade chat bang enjoy if you want that it's right there right now so you can go check it out a hit piece on it what's the hit piece did i miss a donation before let me just quickly read through here I don't think so. Uh, Britsu, $5. Hey, Tom, thoughts on FFIVF5? All right, let's have a look. F5 Networks. I missed, an, I missed a serious damn good deal. I, I can't believe I missed this. Sometimes there's logic in the markets and you think, damn, how did I miss this absolutely easy trade and that was in the REIT space and sometimes I don't realize how many things you can trade in America because do you know what what I should have invested in what we should have invested in guys it's such an easy call data centers REITs for data centers please dear god so easy so easy that would have been an easy trade and sometimes it takes the big brain you got to think ahead what grew last year but also what was declining Data centers were increasing. Data center, the huge amount of data centers needed is massive. So the REITs there have done incredibly well. And it's just, it's the big brain thinking outside that box that sometimes gets you the next big fundamental play as well. Get your fundamentals, your big brain, and your technicals together. It's a match made in heaven, as they say. What do I think about FFIV? FFIV, $11.43 billion company. Uh, yes, it's broken out of its little weird double bottom here. Or at least consolidation. That's strong. It's trying to fill gap. I think it's got a chance. doesn't look bad at all on these charts. If you think about it, this was good consolidation. Once it broke higher, that, that was kind of what you want. It's obviously thinly traded based on this trade, the, the kind of way it's done here. I don't know what happened. I guess it was bad earnings. But yeah. This is the right type of formation, man, for the fill of the gap. And one of the ways you can always tell is if you take the distance of the range and extrapolate that out and it proofs into that pick up to 206, usually it means it's a lot, lot better. People are asking about gold. They're saying, Tom, what's going on? What do you want to know, man? Business Lord, what do you want to know about gold? At this point, dollar index is incredibly strong if it breaks out it could pressure on gold you've got a little bit of resistance here at the 1870 i think a break of 1870 should bring it up to the trend line but this trend line's no mean feat you know this this trend line held for a long time recently on the way up so even though you've got some great looking candles and everything there's a 2050 exponential cross here on the eight hour there's a trend line testing from the bottom up which means there's going to be selling pressure around here so any breakout above here i think it's going to go like this bang bang something like that or at least bang 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 okay now we can move forward so be very very careful there with what's going on with gold in the market gold moves crazy now in the last week yeah it's it's been weakening here for a couple of days and uh, the move over the last couple of days was big let's have a look at copper actually so all materials are getting destroyed and copper is definitely a good one. Good call out guys, complete and utter catastrophe on copper. And I do believe that things like iron ore 
and all these kind of materials and stuff. Clearly, the big banks are rotating out of it. We suspected it a few weeks ago. That's why we've been looking at the healthcare sector, the IBB, biotech sector. This is what we had drawn up on copper. And you can see the weakness coming in here in the market. It's actually very interesting because copper often precurses the market crashing or the market getting a correction in it. Now, because copper is breaching this level, I don't think copper is going to show us the true factor just yet because it's up so much. But, you know, if copper starts breaching, let's pay, say past this support, now stock market, the stock market of the S&P 500 hasn't moved. Geez, that's not going to be good. So I fully expect copper to get back to the 20 exponential moving average. But you know what? It hasn't touched the weekly pretty much since September last year. So we have to expect it. And I do think the materials are getting a beat down on them. They're getting a huge beat down at this point. Scott Morgan says, buy the damn dip on DKNG. Yeah, that DKNG chart's crazy. Speculation DKNG, getting a hit piece on it. Uh, here we go. We've got a thing. Simon Alexander, thank you very much. Uh, DraftKings, DKNG, mentioned negatively by short seller Hindenburg Research. Who cares? We think DKNG has systematically skirted the law and taken elaborate steps to... What is this? Obsticate. What? Obfuscate. What? I don't, stop using big words, dude. You don't need to use those ones. It's black market operations. Whoa. It's basically saying they're money laundering dirty people. Now, if you don't believe that, it could be an opportunity. If you do believe that, wow. That's the hit piece. Jeez, that's a bad hit piece. And let me guess, they're short heavily on it. Just dirty. If that's not proven, you could get them all list on slander on that, couldn't you? Michael H says, fastly moves fastly. <laughs> it certainly does. Let's have a look. Trend line, unfortunately not breached here on DKNG, which is what we were looking for to start positioning through. We're back at support. We're going to be underneath that today. So we're going to go all the way back down to $45 town. Now you would think, because isn't this the favorite of Kathy Wood? You would think that her diligence should be on this. I would I would feel like she should be doing some but she's she also bought CoinSpot for four hundred and twenty dollars. So what, what what Coinbase, sorry. I mean what what can we say about that? But if you scroll through here, she has it here, you would think their team at least it's two point eight percent of the funds. It's no you know it's a decent amount. Is it two point eight percent of the funds? Yeah. Two point eight percent. So you know they've got to be doing one point three five of the weight, sorry. So if they're, if they're not doing due diligence on this, that's that's a bit poor. So there's a hit piece on it, probably by nasty short sellers. Well, actually, definitely by short sellers. Is that a buy the dip scenario? Well, you're certainly getting back into a technical dip here where it comes back down to 45-ish dollars, which it could do today. Remember, it's 7% down the market. This is where I expect buyers hopefully to regain control of the market, either 48 or 45. Nasty stuff. HYG is the hedge fund, hedge for a market crash, says John S. John uh, Gagton's trying to teach me English. He says, to confuse, bewilder, or stupefy. <laughs> Buy the damn dip, Scott Morgan says. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it, it is it is a, uh, a nasty move for it indeed. And I do think that somewhere around here, you should hopefully find some buyers. Hmm. We'll keep, we'll keep a lid on that one. We'll keep watching it throughout the session. So what else do we have to look at today? We had some other stuff going in here. NVIDIA people saying, F, look at Cardano. Okay, we'll do the, the three cryptos. We haven't been nice to the crypto fam today. Let's check this out. So Bitcoin continues to nicely kind of consolidate after this move. I think that any pullback back to this zone, let's say 37.6, should be met by buy demand. We've got a little bit of trend line coming up through the last dips. We've got our bigger trend line that got breached, which I think was a huge deal that happened here. So they could all quantifiably be found with buying support right around this zone. Resistance, resistance, resistance. I'm still watching that level. will come in if it ever does hit there and uh, check it out. 42,000 continues to be the zone that really begins the next 
kind of the recovery of Bitcoin. I mean, it's in accumulation. Some people are saying Wyckoff accumulation, fair enough. It's doing the, the right types of things. Generally speaking, you actually want it to coil here or coil right around this zone, then breach it. And that means that it is the real deal and it's going to continue on. So the longer it sits here and does nothing, actually the better it is, especially if it breaks towards the upside. So hopefully it can do so. BTC looking relatively strong. Move over to Ethereum. You'll notice Ethereum is right on resistance. A breach of this resistance, where do we go? I believe 2800 I think there's $200 here or just underneath $200 in the Ethereum trade if it can breach this resistance. It's a big deal. Breach this, create a nice base, at least move up to 28 if not possibly even 29 So Ethereum is fighting for its life right around this zone. And you can tell so too, because if you go to like an eight hour chart, long leg doji, decisions, lots of resistance, it's gonna to have to coil here for a little bit and then bang, if it gets through as a clear take profit, I think there's a lot of participation to be had in that area. So Ethereum is pretty clear to me. Resistance currently, breakthrough, looks good. ADA Cardano, similar to Ethereum, but just weaker. I think the problem with Cardano is it's still holding an amazing price. I also think that Cardano got a huge boost from everybody being so bullish it after the crash, maybe due to the the uh, the kind of fever that went on in the in the YouTube world over finding out about Wyckoff for the first time. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is recovering. It looks strong, but Ethereum is probably the better of the two charts. Trendline breached to the positive side. If this was a stock, I'd be very bullish at, but because it's a crypto, I'm less bullish on this type of pattern. I got in on ETH finally yesterday. Better late than never, says S. Burgos. At this stage, it looks okay. So hopefully it breaks through for you. Uh, Michael Wilcher says, I love these short seller reports. They're usually excellent buying opportunities. I can't disagree with you. I mean, sometimes they can be really, really good. Any good message boards to find poppers during the trading day? Um, I think like things like stock tweets are still pretty good in terms of just finding boards. But if you're thinking about poppers and stuff, it's only for a very short time of your trading career. Please never forget that all this stuff that's going on with the hype, the anticipation, like how great everything's going for AMC traders and certain other squeeze traders right now. Just remember, it's only a short period. If you want to stay around in the game for a long period of time, you got to learn how to grind this stuff out. So just always remember that. And I also want you guys to think about it. When you make a ton of money, think about protecting that money. If you make heaps on this stuff, protect it with your damn lives, guys. Because you may not ever get the opportunity to make that much quick money. Don't be the statistic of the person that makes a million dollars then loses it two days later. Because they make crazy decisions thinking they're invincible. Hopefully, you will not be one of those. AMC, 60 bucks, the resistance zone, currently 59.15. Breach of that could expose 68.70, 69.00. So it could be a big day there. GME, down 1.41%. On its knees at this point, no interest currently there. Corsair, meh. What is today's code that people are going for? Could be clean energy. Why? Who the hell knows? Do we care? Probably not. But when you look at the chart, you can see the 6%. You can see the chitter chat has improved here. It's had quite a few weak days. Yesterday actually had a decent amount of volume through it. See the volume was pretty decent yesterday between the buyers and the sellers. Smaller candle, bigger volume than this one here. Noticeable, there must be some buyers around in here. Bradley back US $2. Neo had a strong close, 5,200 cross on the 50 plus. Neo is doing really, really well on the charts. Great close there. I totally agree with you. Above the previous resistance, big deal. Really great trend here on Neo at this stage. Very aggressive. 50 bucks next stop. That would be the, the question. We haven't changed these charts for a long time. There's no need to. I mean, it, you are correct. It's a very strong one. 50 and the 200 crossed. Yep, there they are. 
So 50 moving average is crossing above the 200. It's a big backstop here at 40 for it as well, which means there's a huge amount of support around this line. And uh, I think it still looks relatively strong. Is it a stock for me? No, that's why it's not in the stock speculation list. But uh, yeah, it, it is strong and $50 would be the next target. I would probably watch a really small time frame and just kind of find how it's been bouncing. If it's been bouncing off like a one hour 20 or something else. And as you know, and as you find out what it's been bouncing off, that moving average, remember that and follow it like that because it's such an aggressive trend that when it's all over, it will be over. Similar to Caterpillar, similar to John Deere right now, similar to possibly even FedEx. When it breaks, it breaks. Uh, Ozark Granite says, Emo when your emotions get the best of you, it equals broke. That's true. That's true. Uh, oh, I cannot pronounce your name. H-M-I-E, Julius, says it's either CLNE or CLF again today. So CLF was another one we saw start to move. Where's CLNF? CLF, CLF. Cleveland Clips. Nah, surely not this one. Really? A steel manufacturer going hard? On support? I believe that there's there's a few people pulling out of this right now. So Goldman, JP, they're pulling out of some of these stocks. I'm almost sure that their rotation is coming through. Have a look at this as well. IBB. See the strength here in the biotechnology sector? Now that's an index that I'm like, hell yeah. Look at that huge day that came through with Biogen. Wow. Massive. Whoa. Mitchell Miller. Oh, geez. Claps in the chart in the chat for Mitchell Miller. Dear, dear God, man. Mitchell Miller, US $40. Hi, Tom. I'm holding 3K shares of AMC. It's pretty considerable. Let's have a, let's have a quick gander at what that means using the old calculator so three thousand of course my numpad doesn't work three thousand times 60 bucks that's a lot of money that's a lot of money guys let me just put that over here Whew, jesus Hundred and eighty thousand in that. You got some diamond hands, man. All right, forty bucks. Thank you. Hi Tom, I'm holding three K shares of AMC. Should I buy puts to hedge education advice, of course? My risk on the way to the moon. Should longer expirations be better than shorter ones? Tell me what to do without giving me financial advice. Dear God. <laughs> do you want to make it any harder, Mitchell? Do you want to make it any harder? You're basically asking me to give you some silver platter here. And I do appreciate your 40 bucks, man, as always. Hmm. God. Buying puts, that's going to cost you a fortune, bro. That's going to fight. But it's, the further out you go, the more expensive it's going to be. I understand why you're thinking of buying puts because you want to give yourself the upside potential. But of course, you don't want your downside potential. But you're going to have to give up big percentages. So with a, with a put on AMC right now, even out a couple of weeks, and I think that's probably what you're looking at. You're probably looking at some get out of jail kind of concept. I got to think about this, how to position it. Let's say in a theoretical world, you were thinking about AMC and you were thinking, hey, you know, I want to protect a crazy squeezing position that goes wild. And then you go back through history and you think, how long do these generally hold up? Let's have a look on the weekly chart, okay? Let's have a look on the weekly chart. Let's try to be big brain about this. So this has been going on for one, two, three, four weeks. Actually, that's unprecedented because last time it was one week up and down. So let's go to the grandfather of the meme stocks, the GME, the king. How long did that last? One, two, three, and it was all over. So again, AMC is holding up much stronger than it ever did, ever. The second time it came up, one, two, three, four. So we've actually made it past all expectations. So I think probably one of the things that I'm always thinking about when I'm thinking about options is I'm thinking about how long can a movement last without people getting the itchy fingers, without the apes losing control of the fact that they might want to take some profit. They go, well, it's not moving fast enough for me. 
And that's what I always think about. How long can you keep an organized pack of rabbit apes interested in a stock? You gotta think about that question and then you'll probably have your answer. But it's, it's all about the fact that when you put a put on a position, you will lose a certain percentage. Think of Mark Cuban. He got paid in, in shares. He wasn't able to sell those shares. He paid a huge portion of his, of his wealth at the time to protect them. So he basically said, look, I think it's going down. I can't sell them anyway. And he put the protection on them and he basically said, that's a way. Now, if you were to get around, I can't even talk about tax, but if you were to get around certain things, maybe you would want to hold, if you want to hold a position for 12 months, you could put a put on it and then protect it. But you might lose 20% of value on another normal stock. You may lose that much. On this one, you're thinking, how long can this last for? That's the question I would be asking yourself and therefore you would be looking at positioning that way. Geez, that's the best I could do, bro. Wilco, 180K. He's got diamond hands and brass bowls, says Wilco. <laughs> We've got a new member here, Kathy uh, Stin. Oh, my goodness, Kathy. You've got a hard last name to pronounce. Kathy Stin Chom Ch Chombe. Chicombe. Chicombe. I think that's it. Thank you very much, Kathy. Welcome to the Stonk Squad. Thank you so much for supporting us. So yes, I think it's all about timing with options. You've got to think about it with big brain. How long has it been going for? How long do you really believe it can hold up? And how much percentage are you willing to give back? Is it 10%? Is it 20%? And then is this your last shot at it? So are you happy with putting a put in against it putting a four-week expiry on it or a two-week expiry on it, that costing you 10% and no matter what, you're out after that point. And if you're prepared to put a time on your position, then you could use a put. John Moore says, you are now demonetized. Jeez, that's mean, John. I don't think the word balls is going to get me demonetized, but possibly it will. Britsu says you can only keep them interested as long as they see the price going up. I would say you are correct. As long as they see... This has had a huge amount of rebounces in it. So every time it's come down, it's bounced up. Every time it's come down, it's bounced up. There hasn't been a consolidated period of multiple days of decline. In fact, the worst was three. Now, in our experience with the apes throughout all of time, if the apes see a week of decline... The apes are so sad that they lose their diamond hands. The paper hands start flying. The fear starts coming in the market and it's all over. So you are correct. One of the big things about this, or at least comes down to the where the real diamond hands are. The, the big thing here with all of these is understanding the human psychology behind it. If Wall Street managed to get all the hedges, get back control of the market, the way they're going to do it, a week worth of decline, people start to lose the faith. That's a fear is there's only two emotions at the stock market euphoria and giant fear and when we understand that we know pretty much that if you're not trading for the euphoria or the fear you're in the middle you want to be neutral but everyone else is euphoric and fearful the market either overcompensates and goes crazy or the market is fearful that's how i see it euphoria and fear there are no other ways of looking about the market musty says give or must, musty musty probably gives the stream a like guys appreciate that man yannick yevs Ye Ye oh, i always mispronounce the name yannick yevs i think it is chf five dollars adct please all right let's do it man adct then we'll have a re-look over the market so market flat as attack coming in here U.S. oil still the outperformer, 7177. Gold up, down, all around. Dollar index is the strength story of the day for sure at this stage. Let's have a look at ADCT. Ooh, we have this one lined up. Damn. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's looking so close, isn't it? Oh, it's so close. It's just about to close. Well, it got above, but just about to close above here. 
And this hopefully means the end of this nasty downtrend for you. I wouldn't call it yet, but this is the right thing. You've got a trough, you've got a peak, you've got a higher trough, you're about to get a higher peak, you're getting through the 50 moving average and more importantly, the downward trend line. I would draw it up like that. I'd be looking for a nice bullish close today and hopefully you can start your repair. Next take profit zone, somewhere just underneath 28. So what's this? Probably 27-ish dollars. So some pretty big runway here if it can recover through the trend line. Good luck on that one, sir. It's uh, not bad, Yannick, not bad. Difficult name club, that's right. A few people have... Hey, my, my, my name is not easy either. My middle name is crazy. Tom uh, likes his name... Tom likes his names like his tickers, less than four characters, says Darth Sidious. Yeah. Well, I like US oil, Darth. I like US oil and silver. It's not true, Darth. It's not true. Okay, let's keep scrolling through. Flat market in the major indices. Let's have a look at all of these right now. Twitter. Okay, boring, not moving, too high. I think positive move yesterday. What else did we have? We had snow. Snow's an interesting one. It's got all this support, great close yesterday. I'm oh, sorry, the day before yesterday. Decent pickup here. I, I still think snow is showing some signs of decent volume and it is acting technically. So hopefully snow can can hold this level and start to find some more regain. We need to remember this stock at one point ran past $400. Was that euphoric? Yes. Was it dumb? Absolutely. But it's got some guts in it to, towards these levels, like 266, where is it now? 243. So if, it, if the hyper stocks keep going, I expect this one to perform. SE, I think is at resistance. I expect sellers here on this one, unfortunately. In phase, bad candle yesterday. Bad candle yesterday. Though I'm still relatively bullish on the overall pattern. But in phase was another one. Shopify had a really nice closure yesterday. Strong closure. Maybe a little pullback back to this zone, followed by buying 1282. Great close above 1300 for Shopify. That was a good one. Uh, Apple, another strong close. People are asking about it again. Yes, Apple had a great closure yesterday. Probably declines a little bit and then hopefully starts to make its way towards the 135 and the 132. They're the two resistance zones that I see moving forward for that. ARK on the men path. We've been talking about this. ARK and ARKG both look really, really strong and that's because hyper stocks and innovation stocks are back in the markets. All the negative downtrends have been broken against the correct type of peak trough scenario is playing out there. BA, pull back to support. So this is where you need BA to turn around. This is Boeing. Right here, right now. We want this to find buying pressure today. So hopefully Boeing can turn it around through this session. 20 moving average on the daily. Previous resistance. Previous resistance should act as support. It's right on the zone today, guys. We'll watch that one throughout the session. CRISPR, another good day. Well, put in yesterday, another strong 1.39. Hopefully, it can make its way to 136 in the middle. Pins, good. Uh, bit of a rejection here on pins, but I still think overall, the, the market is looking okay here for the pins. PLTR, good, great day yesterday. 25 close, perfect. Let's go to 26, then 28, perfect. NVIDIA. I don't know how it's 720. I think it's one of the best AI plays of the next decade, actually. So I think it's one of the best play AI plays. But this idea of moving into stock splits so heavily, it doesn't make sense to me. I think it's a buy the rumor, get the hell out before the fact. Just like every other one was. Apple, Tesla, buy the rumor, sell the fact on these splits. Tom, what about the Corsair? Mm. I think it's a one day wonder. You know, one day wonder over here. 
that tells me that this could have been a one-day wonder as well. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, everyone yesterday, oh, the product's so great. Is it? Is it that great anymore? I think the market's punishing it for a reason. However, the compelling argument here for Corsair is that it was here without a short squeeze in April, in May, in March. So you've actually been here and it is at a very fair technical level. It's at a very fair technical level. So if you say want to get into this type of stock and you're thinking, hmm, you know, we saw a 19% upside here. I like the stock. I want to hold it anyway. Is it at a fair zone? It's at a much better zone than it was yesterday. That's for sure. Much better zone. What's, what, what's the uh, kind of bad case scenario here? It goes back to the same $32 again. How much percentage loss is that off this zone? 11. Is that is that horrible? I don't think it's horrible. It's not ideal, but yeah. So it, it still holds that, that latent demand in it just being at the point of previous resistance, which acts as support. So from that, it's got it going on. CLNE continues to hold about 6%. AMC continues to hold around 3% here into the market. ISTM says, I love CRSR for investing, but yes, it's over as far as the pump goes. Now, Lucian, we just looked at uh, pins. So that was a good one that we looked at. This is interesting as well. Is JD, that's right, JD, is this actually decent investing at this point? So we saw it break through the trend line, the downward sloping trend line of multiple resistances. Then it broke through, it came back down and it's at a really important zone. Well, not really important zone, but it is at that breakout area from last time. We've got a long leg doji, you'll see here. And then you've got a bit of a buy support yesterday. It's only up 0.34%, very little in the end of the close, but it went down and then it bought up. Let's have a look at all the competitors right now. So we've got Baba. Throw me some competitor codes, guys. So Baba also at its knees heavily discounted from where it has been an overall decent company big trend line you can see the opportunity here yeah these stocks are hated hated like no other right now in the markets but are they just about to start turning around when i when everyone hates something and it be, and it gets forgotten sometimes i come back in and i go that might be one that we need to pay some attention to is se let's say a competitor of Barber and JD in like good good company. It's a great company. But ultimately, it's super overpriced fundamentally, even though they're constantly doing the right moves. JD is much cheaper. It's much cheaper. Baidu also finding some recovery. The volume is not there right now. I would have preferred to see bigger volume through all of these. What was JD's volume? Hmm. Pretty consistent. Big buy. That was the three child policy. That was such a funny, stupid thing. <laughs> the three child policy pushed it through that much. That's why sometimes news is not the best thing to trade off. Yeah, I, I mean, I really want to believe in the JD chart. Let's have a look at the monthly. I want to believe. 18 highs, 48. So it's only put on percentage-wise, in a year of exceptional growth, it's only put on 44% when compared to Amazon. I'll tell you what, it's almost compelling. It's almost compelling. Terry says, SE is still funded by China anyway. Yeah, okay. I bought Google before the split and just sold a one uh, one third to pay for my whole position. That's awesome, Boogie. Well done, Boogie Troy. Congratulations, and I'm glad that you've paid for your position and that you're making those kind of things. It's hated by the hedgies. Well, if it's hated by the yeah, but ultimately it won't be hated by the hedgies. At some point they'll they'll get rid of it and they'll stop doing it. The hedgies don't control the market forever as we've seen. <laughs> and they eventually let it loose after they've taken enough profit 
and they start to see the economic movement come through. So that's an interesting one. We're eight minutes off the market open here, guys. Thanks so much to the 1,400 plus viewers that are joining us for this session. Let's just quickly dial in here on everything we'll be watching into the open. I'm actually going to watch DKNG today. So I'm going to, I'm going to outvote you guys in the chat. DKNG will be watched because I want to see how this reacts. Five-minute chart. It is getting pelted in the morning. 45.11 on the hit piece that came through. Nefarious activities is the story. We cannot confirm nor deny. Someone in the chat may be able to confirm or deny that claim. But nefarious activities has taken it down. Let's load up AMC. $60. These are all the targets and price ranges that we've got. So we've got $52 being a decent level of support. We've got 60 being the resistance. And then we've got a clear next level participation phase to 69. And of course, underneath that, 52, 48, and $40. Some pretty serious zones. Are we going to get some hype music today? Uh, yeah, we can. We can do that. Let's do it now. I haven't redone the video because I've been so slammed today. So uh, I do apologize about that. But we'll get it done tomorrow. All right, guys, you know what time it is? It's time for us to take advantage of the market. We've got hyper stocks still showing great movements here. Maybe a little bit of a cooler day today. Yesterday was just too much fun. Big moves in the morning, CLNE. AMC seeming to get the pump at this point. OCGN as well. We'll check that out in a second. Uh, Jack, I quite like Data Dog. Alrighty guys, Woo. we are ready to go live in just a few moments for the market. So we've got our DKNG set here, we've got our AMC set here. We'll bring up the US 100, 14,129. Will it come down a little bit today? What else would you guys like to watch into the open? Vote now in the chat. Let me know which one you want me to check out. While we're waiting for you guys to vote, let's have a quick look at OCGN. OCGN is up 16.15%, got bashed down off a, I think it was some like cancellation or something of one of their drugs, can't remember why. And then support here was found, the market or at least the uh, the apes decided that there's value here in it and it's moving up 16.15% early. Look, this has had some big runs on it, but ultimately it's... Uh, you know, it's just on support and I don't know how high it goes. The big runs have gone somewhere around this 13-ish dollars. They've gone higher as well. I think that you'd have to be, you'd have to have some big cojones, let's say, to get past 10 bucks <laughs> because $10 would be a very, very huge target. I think it will weaken out at about 8 bucks. So there's, there's no really good technicals here other than it hit support. We've got $10 coming in here from Michael, Mitchell Miller again. Last question, what's up with the crazy candles on AMC, GME, BTX, all at the 801 time frame? Uh, let's have a quick look here. Could be missed price. You got, um, when you trade for a long time, you will see huge amounts of uh, missed feeds and stuff like that. So gold's well known to have bad feeds. Is this on a one minute chart that you're seeing it? This one here? 801 time frame. I'm not really seeing any out of the ordinary charts here. Should I be seeing it on the TradingView platform? Nothing here looks un unusual to me. Let's go to the GME. Can someone send me a screenshot of it? I'll check it out for you, Mitchell. I'll post in the public chat if someone sends me a screenshot of it. Uh, generally speaking, though, if it goes across a couple of stocks, it can also just be a misprice where they've quoted it through. I, I remember trading Ethereum years ago with derivatives, and guess what? The, the thing split. It went to $0.30. Cents. 
it wasn't real price. It went to 30 cents. For It was 400 bucks at the time. So, you know, they, they, it gets deleted and then re-quoted. There is liquidity feed issues in the markets. It's just when you trade it for long enough, you will see these liquidity ones. I would say it's a glitch. Scott Morgan says, we're about to see how good DKNG's PR team is. Yes. Uh, Big Dipper says, DKNG falling in pre-market action, losing 7% of its value, even more than that. Uh, Hindenburg Research issued a short call on the stock, reportedly raising concerns about SPAC process that bought DraftKings public. Well, yeah, of course. It was dope. Like, SPACs are crap. <laughs> I mean, I've always thought SPACs were crap. But I think, you know, to be short on a position then to post it, basically a hit piece on it to make it go short and for it not to be manipulation data is beyond me. I mean, that's that's a pretty massive manipulation of the market if you want to say that. Rick Allen, five bucks, no message here, but thank you very much, Rick Allen. Doc Airline says it's a ladder attack. Doc Airline, are, are, that's what you're saying? Ladder attack on that, that movement there on the AMC? Yeah, I didn't see it on that chart. But uh, yeah, that's what I'll be looking at. Two minutes here to go. These are the stocks that we're currently looking at. Did we get any other votes coming through? We've got BA, CRSR. I guess we'll watch CLNE just because it was the one moving some of the most pre-market. And it had the most chitter chatter on it. So we'll go five minutes on CLNE. You can see 7.16%. Let's have a look how the rest of the market does end up opening. Scroll around here. Biggest movers today so far. BioNTech, Twitter, Intuit. Spotify, probably worthwhile having a look at that chart. It does look relatively bullish. Spotify, there is movement there. Amgen, T Row, Trade Desk. Let's go to the speculation watch list. We have big movers in Ocugen, Clean Energy, CLNE, Mara, AMC, Riot, etc. Because Mara and Riot are up, you would think Square would be doing better this morning. So, one minute till the market opens. Again, Rick, thank you very much for your donation there. Sorry if you had a message. I could not see it, but I do appreciate that. Do I give up on Safe Moon? Says Rashad. Why are you in Safe Moon, Rashad? Why are you in Safe Moon? Jeez, this hit piece is really hurting it. Here we go, guys. We're open. There's the bell. Ding, 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 ding. We made it to Tuesday. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us through the session. AMC opens at 58.16. Got DKNG 44.73. It really does open 12% down on that hit piece. We are about to see how good the PR team is. AMC quickly shooting up to test the resistance at 60. We'll see how that ends up in a few seconds. Let's scroll through all these stocks. So we've got uh, most of these kind of short potentials up barely because um, they've been going down so much every single day. CLNE holds a 5.55%. Almost every other short squeeze stock that we've got here is down or at least flat. AMD opens 0.18 down. Uh, that didn't look too bad yesterday from a uh, from a chart perspective. So we'll look at that one throughout the session. What else have we got? Apple, Net, Square, CRM. Square up 0.53. Makes sense for it to be up when you've got Mara doing its thing. And nothing else. VIX up a little bit, 1.95%. AMC still putting the damage on. And DKNG, the dip buyers are coming in. Let's have a look. Makes sense. It's right at that zone, 45 bucks. 45 bucks. Hmm. Raising questions about how they got in the market. Who knows whether they'll be in some scandal or something. Rick Allen's got a question about Facebook. Let's have a look at Facebook. Nice breakout up here. Yeah, Facebook, look, you know my target here on Facebook. For a while, I've said, I think this thing can get to the 360. Why? Because I took this range, I extrapolated it out, and it gave me 360. So yes, I think Facebook still looks good on the charts. It's been the sleeper hit, let's call it, of the FANG stocks. It's the sleeper hit. No one likes Facebook, I understand. But there's more than just the company that we think of. They have a lot of other stuff and they were definitely undervalued when compared to the other FANG, if you can even call it that anymore. Doc Airlines says 60 within five minutes. Yeah, 
yeah, it's moving moving well. AMC is at the sixty dollar target, forty six now for DKNG, US one hundred fourteen thousand eighty six. So we expect today for it to at least test from the top down, which was what we said at the start of the session. Seemed to make sense. Let's have a look at a four hour chart here just quickly. You'll notice previous resistance will become hopefully support around this 14,075. Let's see if dip buyers or day traders come and pick this one up because it does make sense to pick up around that level. Let's have a look at the one hour 20. So it's through that one hour 50 was last time, which sits at 14,075. It's interesting today. There's some there's some little bit of weakness here in the air. You can definitely start to smell it. All of these suddenly red, only Airbnb is green, and also Boeing. Well, Boeing is straight on support. Do we need to be worried? I think this is perfectly normal for it to come down and hit these levels. People are saying Zom. Let's have a quick look at Exxon. Great day for Exxon, 1.14% up. So it should be. Look at the daily. I think this has been quite disappointing. Zom should be higher already. Should have done the damage and got to our, uh, was it 66? It should already be at 67 in my opinion, but it's only going to hit that when it hits 75 oil. Right above the resistance. Oil still does look strong. Why is Tesla going down? I think the problem with Tesla is it's not showing the market anything good. The market's saying, give me some damn numbers. And at the same time, you know, people with a lot of money, they're probably closing positions. They're probably saying, you know, Toyota's in the game now. We've got Volkswagen in the game now. We've got GM, we've got Ford. We've got everyone entering this electric market. What made Tesla special on the surface, I understand it's on the surface, is not there anymore. I also think Elon did no favors spending more time on Twitter than possibly doing work. I reckon a lot of people that held it uh, will have actually removed positions. I know that seems weird, but I could actually see that being one of the reasons why it's hovering and it's not finding the normal strength that it once was. AMC breaching 60 is a pretty big deal. Closed above as well. Instant short met by buying pressure. Will 68, 69 be hit here? Good luck, Mitchell Miller, um, if it does, because this is a fairly significant closure out here. 15 minutes, still not closed. I'd love to see a 15 minute above. 15 minute above would be probably what I'd be looking at. <laughs> Daniel, funny comment. All right, everyone. It looks like we've made it to this point. Fed meeting and quad, quad witching hour coming up, says Truly Messiah. That's correct. Lots of things. Quad witching hour, always a cool event. We'll be making a video about that moving forward. So everybody, stay safe out there today. Look, we've got a little bit of red coming into the markets. I don't think it's unprecedented that it shouldn't come back in, considering the huge moves we saw yesterday. We'll watch this zone very alertly on the NASDAQ. This will be the area that we're looking at. S&P 500 actually holding quite well in comparison. Hopefully around here is about as negative as we get for the session. Um, this would be where I'd like to start seeing the buyers come back in and start to get control of the market. As always, stay healthy, stay safe, and make as much money as humanly possible, but only when it's safe to do so, yeah? You want to do it with safety first. That's the big key. Good luck, everyone. Have a great day. Number one draft pick says Elon lost focus. Yeah, I think he did a little bit. Massey says red day. Yeah, uh, yeah I think it could be. I think it could be a red day. But do remember, yesterday was pretty damn green. So some stocks will be up and they may turn later as well. I'm still feeling pretty okay about the market. We'll reassess in the morning. Remember to subscribe if you want to check out our daily videos. And we'll see you tomorrow.